You're listening to Book Insights, brought to you by Memoed, finding and simplifying the world's most powerful ideas to fit into your lifestyle. Each episode is a deep dive into a nonfiction bestseller that can change your life or make you think. In around 30 minutes, you'll learn all about a book that offers wisdom for your life, career, or business. So get ready to live and work smarter, better, and happier with Book Insights. May 17th, 2014, the University of Texas at Austin. Admiral William H. McRaven, a retired U.S. Navy admiral, dressed in his crisp white admiral's uniform, begins his commencement address to the graduating class by harking back 36 years to his own graduation ceremony at UT. He fondly recalls memories of the event, from suffering a throbbing, party-induced headache to having his then-girlfriend, who would later become his wife, by his side. He recounts being formally commissioned by the Navy on the same day. Despite these strong memories, McRaven admits he cannot remember the person who gave the commencement speech. Without missing a beat, he turns to his amused audience and declares, If I can't make this commencement speech memorable, I can at least make it short. That short speech, which begins by referencing the University of Texas motto, What Starts Here Changes the World, became a viral sensation, with almost 10 million views. The 10 fundamental principles that McRaven shared that day became a book, Make Your Bed, Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe the World. He draws on his experience in the Navy SEALs, from enduring the grueling training program to serving in Afghanistan. He also documents his own brushes with death and his experiences of dealing with grief and loss. The result is a rewarding and encouraging read, a manual for living a better life, whether in uniform or not. Admiral William H. McRaven served as a Navy SEAL for 37 years and ultimately became a commander of all U.S. Special Operation Forces. Under Barack Obama, he became a four-star admiral and was put in charge of Operation Neptune Spear, which ended the life of Osama bin Laden. He is now Chancellor of the University of Texas system. At first glance, The heights of McRaven's decorated military career may seem remote and irrelevant to the average civilian, but the simple lessons that form the basis of his rigorous training can be applied to everyday life. They may not be profound, he readily admits, but they can change you. And when many people fulfill their potential, the world changes. The six-month-long basic Navy SEAL training is notoriously demanding, designed to push each trainee to their physical and mental limits. Do they have what it takes to join the elite ranks? McRaven explains how each stage of the training helped transform him into a stronger individual. In this book Insight, we'll consider a selection of the 10 lessons that McRaven covers and the themes that connect them. First, we'll look at the importance of self-discipline and attention to detail, as encapsulated in the book's title. Second, we'll consider the inevitability of failure and the need to build resilience whether or not you have seemingly sadistic Navy instructors at your back. Third, we'll turn to Admiral McRaven's admission that life is unfair, and the sooner we accept that, the better. But by taking risks and facing up to bullies, we can achieve great things. We'll end on McRaven's emphasis on perseverance and his appeal to everyone to never give up. Finally, we'll consider the book's value as a practical manual and motivational guide that's in the tradition of other great commencement speeches. McRaven's journey of self-examination begins with a recollection of the most seemingly mundane of situations. He describes the start of his day at the austere SEAL training barracks on the beach at Coronado, San Diego. Residents could hear the Pacific tide rolling in and out, but there were certainly no in-room amenities here. Four beds, a closet, and no more. A uniform and bed inspection signaled the beginning of each day. Instructors scrutinized every aspect of the trainee's uniform, from hat to boots, and made sure the beds were made to their exacting standards. Failure to comply with the training program standards would mean facing the messy and humiliating penalty known as the sugar cookie. This involved the guilty party being forced to hit the surf and then roll in the sand until they were covered head to foot in wet sand. They'd then have to stay like this all day, damp and uncomfortable. 
But it wasn't only the threat of the degrading sugar cookie treatment that motivated McRaven and his fellow trainees to polish their boots and belt buckles, to align the creases on their shirts and trousers, and fold their bedsheets into tight hospital corners. This daily discipline instilled pride and a sense of achievement, however small, that started the day off on the right note. Here's McRaven during his seminal speech at the University of Texas at Austin. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. McRaven recalls that years later, when convalescing after a serious parachute accident, the first thing he did once he was able to move from his bed was to make it. That Navy training was drilled into him, but he knew that making his bed wasn't a meaningless task. Yes, it may have paled in comparison to the exhausting runs and obstacle courses that filled each day of training, but it was a task that demonstrated discipline. Doing even a little thing right can set you up for doing bigger, better things well. Conversely, letting the small things go can set you on a slippery slope into disorder and eventually chaos. The 9-11 attacks happened while McRaven was recuperating from his parachute accident. Confined to his bed, he was frustrated that he could not join his comrades at this time of crisis. Just a month later, though, he was in the White House, working in the newly formed Office of Combating Terrorism. Two years later, he was in Baghdad. McRaven found himself part of the team that guarded the captured Iraqi leader, Saddam Hussein. On his daily visits to the prisoner, one thing really stood out. Hussein never bothered to make his bed. Let's take a quick break. Next time, we'll continue our dive into William H. McRaven's Make Your Bed by learning three more of his lessons. Face failure, build resilience, and accept that life is unfair. Enjoying this episode of Book Insights? If so, keep listening and learning. There's a collection of over 100 titles you can read or listen to now at memodapp.com slash insights. That's M-E-M-O-D-A-P-P dot com slash insights. Admiral William McRaven belongs to the U.S. military elite, a four-star admiral who was tasked with some of the country's most crucial missions. He hopes his true stories of perseverance, determination, and valor against all odds during his time as a United States Navy SEAL will inspire others to overcome their own challenges. We're continuing our book insight as we dive into McRaven's best-selling book, Make Your Bed, Little Things That Could Change Your Life and Maybe the World. This time, we're learning three lessons. Face failure, build resilience, and accept that life is unfair. While Navy SEALs training is designed to separate the strong from the weak, by its very nature it also demands an acceptance of failure. There's no way anyone is going to get through this grueling program with a spotless record. Missed targets and failed challenges, injury, punishment, insult, and illness, these are all part of it. And so it is in life, McRaven says. Failure is inevitable, and we need to be equipped to deal with it and to learn from it. He describes the circus, a ritual held every afternoon that was anything but fun. If you'd made the circus list during the day, it meant your efforts had missed the mark, and two further hours of hardcore calisthenics were the price to be paid. That and having abuse hurled at you by the instructors. The resulting exhaustion would mean trainees were at a disadvantage the next day, likely to hit the circus list again, and thus begin a new downward spiral of failure. McRaven found himself on the circus list after a below-par swim through the choppy waters off the coast of Coronado Island. At least he had his swim buddy, Mark Thomas, at his side. In SEAL training, all recruits are paired up with a buddy, a partner on long swims, someone to be physically tied to during underwater dives, and inevitably your closest companion throughout the training process. In this case, both men had failed to keep pace with their class, but the SEAL policy was that if one of the pair had failed an event, both would suffer a punishment. This emphasized the importance of teamwork. As buddies, 
you endured the lows and celebrated the highs together. McRaven and Thomas braved the grueling sequence of flutter kicks, push-ups, pull-ups, and more, but found themselves back on the circus list again the following day. But both men were determined to come out on the other side. This commitment brought a surprising silver lining. They gradually found that the extra calisthenic sessions, designed as a punishment, were actually making them stronger. Their swimming speed and pace improved. Come the final five-mile ocean swim, the pair reached the beach finishing line well ahead of the pack. For once, the instructor had only congratulatory words for them. Well done, gentlemen. It looks like all that extra pain and suffering paid off. Here's McRaven during his famous commencement speech at the University of Texas at Austin. An interesting thing happened to those who were constantly on the list. Over time, those students who did two hours of extra calisthenics got stronger and stronger. The pain of the circuses built inner strength and physical resiliency. Life is filled with circuses. You will fail. You will likely fail often. It will be painful. It will be discouraging. At times, it will test you to your very core. But if you, don't, if you want to change the world, don't be afraid of the circuses. By persevering, he and his partner found the positive side to failure and gained strength from it, both physically and mentally. To get through stuff, everyone needs to find someone to paddle with. This episode served him well in later years, when he faced a different sort of setback in his military career. McRaven was fired from leading his SEAL squadron, having tried to make changes to its organization. He was not cast out for good, but he felt that the stigma of failure clung to him. He remembers, Everywhere I went, other officers and enlisted men knew I had failed, and every day there were whispers and subtle reminders that maybe I wasn't up to the task of being a SEAL. But tapping into that resilience that he'd cultivated in training enabled McRaven to forge ahead in a new post and convince his platoon that he was up to the job. He went on to command countless successful missions in Iraq and Afghanistan, rescuing hostages, stalling suicide bombers, and saving lives. His hard-won lesson? Rather than quit because of them, the best leaders learn from their mistakes. They don't shy away from the circus before them, whatever form that takes. When faced with a huge challenge, there is no way around it but through the middle. Remember the sweet-sounding sugar cookie? The cruel punishment meted out to those trainees whose beds weren't made neatly enough? Well, it turns out it wasn't reserved for that transgression alone. The SEAL instructors were happy to dole it out whenever they wanted. McRaven recalls, There was no rhyme or reason. You became a sugar cookie at the whim of the instructor. Those in charge were keen to teach the trainees that life isn't fair. However hard you try, however much you strive, don't expect rewards or gold stars. Sometimes you get penalized instead. Sometimes you get no recognition at all. In these situations, it's important to find a way to move forward rather than complain or become despondent. Think of great men and women like Nelson Mandela, Stephen Hawking, Helen Keller, and Malala Yousafzai. They didn't let a sense of injustice stand in their way. The sugar cookie is a metaphor for life's indiscriminate slings and arrows. In whichever form they come, McRaven urges us not to dwell on misfortune, hardship, or accidents. Take a leaf out of the book of his fellow seals, such as Lieutenant Moki Martin, the instructor behind one of McRaven's sugar cookie ordeals. A serious bike collision left him paralyzed from the waist down and ended Martin's Navy career. But he went on to become an accomplished painter and founder of the yearly Superfrog Triathlon. He never once resorted to self-pity. Or Ranger Adam Bates, who stepped on a pressure plate bomb and consequently lost both his legs, only a week into his first combat mission. His first words to McRaven communicated via sign language were, I will be okay. Here's McRaven once again during his speech at the University of Texas at Austin. Every SEAL knows that under the keel, at that darkest moment of the mission, is a time when you need to be calm, when you must be calm, when you must be composed, when all your tactical skills, your physical power, and your inner strength must be brought to bear. If you want to change the world, you must be your very best in the darkest moments. Midway through the book, McRaven tells of the many ramp ceremonies he's had to attend. These are events you may have seen on television where massive military planes, returning from war zones, come to a halt on the tarmac 
and lower their ramps to unload the most precious of cargo, the bodies of fallen soldiers. He's listened to the lonesome traditional bugle call of taps far more often than he would have wished. Grieving families are taken out to the plane to meet the flag-draped coffins. Sometimes they've only heard about the death of their loved one a few days before. In the face of their disbelief, shock, and pain, McRaven never managed to find the right words that might justify the loss or comfort them. But he'd observed one person who could. Marine Lieutenant General John Kelly was the military assistant to the Secretary of Defense. At these events, he'd moved from one bereaved family to another, and through his words and hugs, somehow gave them a lift. The reason he made a difference? Kelly's son Robert had been killed in Afghanistan in 2010. His family had struggled in the years following, but they had survived through their heartache and loss. What Kelly gave people was a sense of what's possible. Despite a debilitating loss, it was still possible to rise above the pain, to see that life can still have meaning. It can even be the start of some new purpose, of changing the world in some way. Kelly didn't just comfort the bereaved families, he inspired McRaven, too. He remembers how, when they were up to their necks in mud, when it looked like they wouldn't make it, some Navy SEAL trainees started singing. It was the only thing they could do to give each other strength and bolster camaraderie. The experience gave McRaven an important lesson about the power of hope. If you want to change the world, start singing when you're up to your neck in mud. Such demonstrations of courage stand in stark contrast to the behavior McRaven witnessed in the captured Saddam Hussein. He likens the bullying of the fallen dictator, who managed to intimidate visiting new Iraqi leaders even in his prison cell, to the great white sharks that McRaven and his counterparts had to swim amongst as part of their training. Vicious, circling the weak and timid, ready to take advantage. But a funny thing can happen. By showing courage, you deprive a bully of the fear they thrive on. In Saddam's case, McRaven instructed the guards to isolate the prisoner and not speak to him. Over the following month, McRaven visited him once every day and refused to exchange any words with him. With no one to intimidate or subjugate, the Butcher of Baghdad had lost all of his power. Let's take one final break. Next time, we'll conclude our exploration into William H. McRaven's Make Your Bed. We'll learn McRaven's key lesson, never give up. Enjoying this episode of Book Insights? If so, keep listening and learning. There's a collection of over 100 titles you can read or listen to now at memodeapp.com slash insights. That's M-E-M-O-D-A-P-P dot com slash insights. William H. McRaven came face to face with high profile war criminals such as Saddam Hussein and inevitably lost friends and brothers in arms in the line of duty as a Navy SEAL. Through his strict principles of self discipline, grit, and a stubborn refusal to quit, McRaven advanced and succeeded. His stories encourage us to keep going no matter what and to find new power in ourselves. In this final part of our book insight into McRaven's best selling book, Make Your Bed, Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe the World, we'll learn McRaven's key lesson, Never Give Up. Make Your Bed rests on the idea of never giving up. McRaven recalls that in Navy SEAL training, there's a physical representation of quitting, the bell. Trainees can't just slink off home when it all gets too much. They must walk across the courtyard to the brass bell and ring it three times. That toll signals their abandonment of training and of their ambition to be a Navy SEAL. The possibility of quitting is dangled in front of the trainees from the very start. On the first day, the instructor addresses the 150 students with brutal honesty. Most of you will not make it through. I will see to that. I will do everything in my power to make you quit. Ahead lie six months of pain, risk, harassment, and abuse. But the option of quitting will always be there. The bell represents an extra dimension of the training, an ever-present temptation to resist. The instructor declares, ring the bell and you won't have to get up early. Ring the bell and you won't have to do the long runs, the cold swims, or the obstacle course. Ring the bell and you can avoid all this pain. Up to their chests in thick mud, late at night in the mudflats of Tijuana, 
trainees find the siren call to quit pretty enticing. This latest ordeal is part of Hell Week. Six days of endless exercises, instructor persecution, and no sleep. This is by no means the end of the training process, simply one stage of three. But it's often crunch time. More students quit at this point than at any other. It's when the merely strong are separated from the truly tough. The instructors torture the suffering trainees with the promise of a seat by the fire, hot coffee, and steaming chicken soup. And of course, there's a catch. If five men quit, then the rest of the class can tuck in. Resolve wavers, comfort beckons. Then, one man starts to trudge towards dry ground and defeat. Seeing him, one of the group launches into song, encouraging the others to join in. Their voices grow louder and louder, forming a makeshift military choir. The man whose resolve is faltering turns back to his comrades and decides to keep going. There's an exhilarating sense of strength in numbers and solidarity. Never quit. It doesn't sound particularly profound, McRaven says. But as an instructor said to him in his class on their first day, if you quit, you will regret it for the rest of your life. Quitting never makes anything easier. Here's McRaven during his 2014 commencement speech at the University of Texas at Austin. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are the toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never, ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. From an initial 150 trainees, only 33 were left at graduation day. Granted, not everyone is cut out to be a Navy SEAL, but everyone can learn what it means to refuse to quit. These lessons and others are outlined in 10 concise chapters in Make Your Bed. In this book insight, we've explored four which underpin McRaven's philosophy. We started by discussing the importance of discipline and attention to detail, making your bed every morning being a case in point. It's an example of a small daily habit that can have far-reaching effects. We moved on to examine the inevitability of failure and the positive spin that can be put on even the most wretched situations. Life has a habit of dealing us the short straw. Third theme we discussed was this unfairness and the need to accept that and not let it hold you back. Finally, we considered perhaps the most fundamental lesson of all, the one McRaven reserves for his closing chapter, the exhortation to persevere and never, ever quit. In Make Your Bed, Admiral McRaven turned a short commencement speech into a handbook with universal appeal. There are plenty of motivational books out there, many written by military veterans, full of gung-ho advice and grisly stories. This is a little more restrained. Sure, it covers helicopter ambushes and the capture of a brutal dictator, but these descriptions are given in brief, without hyperbole or unnecessary detail. They serve to reinforce the ten lessons which have shaped McRaven's career and his life, and which he hopes can provide inspiration to others. The clear prose mirrors the simple wisdom of his advice. In his chapter on taking risks, McRaven mentions his admiration for the British Special Air Service, or SAS, and its motto, Who Dares Wins. In his mind, it applies to life generally. Those three words could represent the message of Make Your Bed. McRaven isn't the first writer to draw on a commencement speech. J.K. Rowling's book, Very Good Lives, The Fringe Benefits of Failure and the Importance of Imagination, is based on her 2008 commencement speech at Harvard. As a recipient of countless rejection letters, her pitch for Harry Potter was famously rejected 12 times. She has a different take on failure to McRaven, but also salvages some positive lessons from her disappointments. Steve Jobs' 2005 commencement speech at Stanford is another famous one, although it was too short to have been made into a book. Jobs shared the pain of being fired from Apple, a company he had built. Yet the event turned out to be the best thing that had happened to him. It led him to create Next and to build Pixar, which created the foundation for his return to Apple. And without being fired, he would never have met his wife, Lorene. Again, the message, embrace failure and move on. Readers of McRaven's contribution to this category may be reminded of Friedrich Nietzsche's classic adage, what does not kill you makes you stronger. However tough or unusual the challenges he faced, whether as a SEAL trainee, a White House strategist, or on the ground in Iraq and Afghanistan, the conclusions are relatable. You can conquer adversity as long as you have the right people in your corner, 
and you have the grit to keep going no matter what. McRaven's stories of honor, heartbreak, determination, and triumph are likely to inspire even the most cynical and pessimistic among us. You too can rise up from the cold mud of personal misery or challenge, and in doing so, make the world one bit better. Thank you for listening to Book Insights. Check out the rest of our content at memodap.com. Please keep in mind that the information provided in or through our Book Insights episodes is for educational and informational purposes only. It's not intended to be a substitute for advice given by qualified professionals and should not be relied upon to disregard or delay seeking professional advice. Thank you.